In this video today, I'm going to teach you how to use the uh, what we call the WYSIWYG editor. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And this is the area in WordPress where we actually type all our content. And for the most part, it works a lot like Microsoft Word and other word processing programs that you're used to. But we just wanted to go over what each of the functions were in that editor so that you can format your content effectively and be able to write great posts and pages. To start off with, actually, with the M with the WYSIWYG editor, or it's also called the MCE editor, I actually use a plugin called the Tiny MCE Advanced plugin. So if you were to go search for this in the plugin directory by clicking Add New, and then if you were to type in Tiny MCE Advanced, you would be able to find this plugin and install it. I've already installed it, as you can see. But what's the, what this will do is it will give you an area down here in your settings where you can do Tiny MCE Advanced. And then this will give you a whole bunch of other options to put up into your editor if you want them. And so for instance, like maybe I want to be able to do block quotes. I'll move the quote box up here so I can do block quotes. And there are a few others here you can read through. And a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. And if you don't know what they are, you probably don't need them. And... Uh, we could probably put up some other ones with the fonts and things if we wanted to, but for now I'm not going to do that. So we change our settings here, and then we click Save. And so you can add in a whole bunch of tools into this so you have a variety of options for working with your posts and pages. So now let's say I go to add a new post. And for the most part, using the WYSIWYG editor, there are two versions of the WYSIWYG. There are visual and there's HTML. We use the HTML anytime we're copying and pasting code into our site, which can happen if sometimes when we're like up copying and pasting a banner ad from an advertiser, or sometimes you'll get a little code to put a form, like if you're wanting to put an email sign-up form into your website, it'll probably be in the form of a snippet of code that you're gonna paste in in the HTML version. But for the most part, we're gonna be working in the visual version, which is using it a lot like Microsoft Word. And so in here, I mean, you'll see that there are a variety of options. So I'm going to just write this is a test sentence. And you'll see here that I can do a lot of things with this. I can highlight that and bold it, or I can highlight that and unbold it. I could obviously highlight that and italicize it or unitalicize. I can do a strike through, which puts a line through it, take that away, or I can underline it. I could have it be in a bullet point or take it off. So you just click these once, click them twice, it takes them off. I could have it be in a numbered list, take it off. I could have it be indented in, that's what this does, but for now that works better when you've already indented something. There we go. So you have to type in some text and so if you want to center something you can center it or we could come down to the next line, type some stuff, and flush it right. So you see, I mean, I just typed in some test frame, <laughs> just junk there. But I mean, that's pretty similar to Word. You just use your flush left, center, flush right. Um, these ones, these are how we do links. And we're actually going to focus a whole video just on links, so don't worry about that for now. And this is also where you could upload an image, but, I, but we can also do images up here. And images is something we're going to give a whole video to. Um, editing the CSS style is something you probably will never do. Same thing with these insert more, insert page breaks. Those are ones I never use. Here's a spell check if you want to spell check what you're doing. And this is to find if you're looking for a certain thing on your page. And then toggle full screen mode um, lets you see if you want to just type in a full screen mode instead of in a little box. You can do that. This little guy right here on the far right, sometimes you'll get into your editor and things will be missing. And so if you, so this is called show and hide kitchen sink. That's if you don't want all the formatting buttons, uh, you can check that one. The next one you probably want to look into is, let's say, let's go type, this is a test sentence again. So we type that and we can obviously change our font size here. I actually don't use the font size changing very often. The reason for that is I'm going to use this paragraph one. This does formatting. And if I'm going to make it bigger, I'm probably going to make it a heading two or a heading three or a heading one or a heading four. 
for. And the reason for that is this is how we can let Google know the hierarchy of our information. If you switch this over to HTML, I did a heading 2, you'll see in the code here there's an H2, H2. Anything inside of there Google knows is a heading 2 is therefore more important than something that has an H3 tag or no heading tag around it. And so for HTML reasons and the way search engines crawl our site, if you have important keyword phrases in your headings, it's actually more beneficial to use these heading buttons than to just go play around with the different font sizes. And so we're used to playing around with font size from Microsoft Word, but I would say in WordPress and writing for the web, we're better off to just get the hang of using these heading functions instead. And if you really need to play around with font sizes, you can do it. But 9 out of 10 times, your content will look really neat if you're just using these heading buttons. These are clipboards, so if you want to copy and paste, maybe you're writing as in a plain text editor, or if you're writing your original document in Microsoft Word, especially with Microsoft Word, don't ever just copy and paste straight from Word into here. Uh, that's something that will cause problems since Microsoft Word has its own coding and will screw it up. So anytime you're copying from Word, use this. And it's also a general rule of thumb, just write everything right in WordPress. It's better to get out of the habit of writing in Microsoft Word since sometimes the copy and paste doesn't work like you think it would. Um, remove formatting as if it's formatting something weird on you, you can use that button. If you want to insert custom characters, you can use that. If you want to print, you can do that. Here's where you can select text color. This is where you can select background colors if you want to highlight something. These are your emoticons if you want to put smileys or whatever in your text. And superscript subscript I mean this is I don't ever use these but pretty self-explanatory if you're if you don't know what those are you probably won't need them this is your undo button this is to insert or embed a media movie but you can also do that up here and then this is to insert or edit attributes I don't even know what that is so I don't use it and what we have down here are is our table and this is something that's coming out of the tiny MCE editor. If you're just using your basic installation of WordPress, you won't see anything for your tables. But sometimes putting your content into a table is a great way to format it so that it, like if you're wanting to put three pictures right in a row, I'd put those all in a table rather than try and upload them individually into WordPress because it'll format them weird unless they're inside of a table. And so learning to use tables is something that's a little bit more advanced, but when we're formatting on the internet, sometimes it's a good way to do things. And so my recommendation now is to play around with it, see how it works. And then if you run into questions, go look for additional instruction videos or leave comments on this page, what you're having a hard time with, we can help you with it. And then, of course, this is like our block quote. We put something in a quote. It's going to move it over and make it set offset it as if you were doing a block quote. And so that's everything you need to know to use the WYSIWYG editor. I mean, most of these are formatting options we're already familiar with. In the following two videos we're going to do, we're going to talk about doing links. We're also going to talk about the various ways we can put images into our posts. So I hope to see you next time.